Good morning, folks. CME impacted overnight. It was not major at all. We've got a big story I hope doesn't get swallowed up by post-election coverage, but it probably will. We're hitting the climate as well, but first things first, over at spaceweathernews.com, we'll watch a calm last 24 hours on our star, except for a small filament that erupts violently at the northern tip of the coronal hole. The burst shot east and will completely miss Earth, but what we were waiting for did indeed arrive. The CME struck a few hours ago, and it was indeed just a glancing blow. Density was pretty solid, actually, but speed was slow and weak. We may get some KP movement today, or we may not. Wouldn't shock me, but probably not to storm level. Of course, the coronal hole here is where we expect geomagnetic disruptions to crop up if they do. It's facing Earth, and we'll have its solar wind stream arrive here as we're heading into the weekend. Solar flaring is unlikely to rise if there aren't any sunspots on the disk. Let's do a full sphere analysis to see what might be coming. Starting at zero, which is directly facing Earth right now, let's peek behind the incoming limb and find sunspots at bright spots across the northern latitudes, and then it leads into the massive northern coronal hole on the far side of the sun. Perhaps some sunspots are turning in soon. Top story is this. Folks, we have yet another new theory that says goodbye to dark matter, and instead seeks to modify gravity and the state of universal information across the zero points, although he doesn't actually call them that. Instead of all the information being detailed on the perimeter of our universe, he believes it is indeed held in the space, which is a vacuum energy and electric universe principle. Utterly spectacular work that few people are likely to hear about, unless you tell them. Couple shots from down under here. Strong winds and hail batter the area over the start of the week. NOAA has released the October U.S. climate report, and here we go. Max daily temperatures saw mostly above average, with a splash of both extremes. The daily lows, however, were predominantly higher, albeit with far fewer of the super high readings. We've also got the precipitation for the month. Really wet northwest and a dry southeast kind of an understatement and to show you why let's go check the drought monitor from a month ago the small drought patch to the southeast is what we notice and the drought area to the northwest well after the northwest took major rain and the southeast stayed dry look at the comparison drought monitor from november 1st significant changes the last month with a major expansion of the drought in the southeast and basically a disappearance of the drought in the northwest Quick FYI for those who don't know which Facebook is really ours because there are a couple that look like it could be us. It's the Mobile Observatory Project. Link is for you below. And if you feel like being my friend, that's what the personal page looks like. While I'm here, anyone with students in New Mexico should come out to the Discovery Festival in about nine days. This is a major STEM project in our state and admission is free. We've got pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.